Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the nursery again for a second week. Today is July 6th and this is my weekly shop update. So last week when we last met here on the video, <laughs> sorry I'm in a kind of weird mood today. I don't know why, but anyway, last week we were on, last the last week's update I had just had, wow, in last week's update I had just completed the construction of the two side assemblies of the bassinet. Now last week I went ahead and I cut the Morrison tenon joints that would connect the two rails or the four rails, the top of the upper rail and the lower rail to the side assemblies, connecting those two together. And it was at that point that I could really see it start to rock for the first time. And that was a really cool experience because I've never seen it rock. And it was kind of nice to know that it would actually rock back and forth. And it does have a really nice rock to it. It doesn't, kind of when it finds its natural rhythm, it's not very fast. It's a very nice gradual rock and it doesn't really have a whole lot of travel, which I think is a really nice, it's nice, nice feature. Now, another little feature on this bassinet is the spindles. They are angled out at six and a half degrees is what it ended up being um, from the lower rail here to the upper rail. So that's about six and a half degrees. And I cut that on the, or I drilled the holes on the drill press. And to do that, I created a little cradle out of a scrap piece of, I think it was like two by four. Yeah, it was a two by four that I cut at the same angle that I found from connecting a line from the top corner of the lower rail to the underside of this upper rail. And just used my bevel gauge to capture that angle, took that angle to the table saw and just made a rip cut just to create a little cradle for that, or for all the rails to rest in while the holes are being drilled. I ended up going with 12 spindles on the design. I think originally I was gonna go with 10 but I like the spacing on the 12 because they're a little bit closer and they're still within the, the safety range, whatever you want to call that. Um, yeah, for the spindles, those are also really interesting too. I picked up a spindle maker. I'm sure people, a lot of people make them. They're like little uh, like pencil sharpener style things. They just run a piece of square stock through and there's a blade in it and it's supposed to cut a dowel out of it. I picked up one of those from Woodcraft and I made three dowels that way. I made three spindles that way and they came out really nicely. It was really quick, really easy. And then that thing broke. <laughs> so I was like, well, I didn't really feel like making one of those things. Um, so I just went to the lathe and I started turning all the spindles on the lathe. And I started out, actually turned half the spindles on the lathe down to a half inch. And I got them really consistent and all that fun stuff. And then when I went to start putting it together, I'm like, oh, I can just, to get the, the ends of the spindles perfectly sized a half inch for the holes I drilled, I could just run those ends through my dowel plate to get those ends perfectly a half inch and then call it good. I'm like, well, why can't I just run the whole spindle through the dowel plate at that point and create the whole, the whole spindle at a half inch to the dowel plate. And that way I wouldn't have to be as precise on the lathe. I could just get it roughly to a little bit above a half inch, pound it all the way through the dowel plate and be done with it and then it would fit on both ends and be nice and consistent. So that's what I ended up doing. I did the rough, roughing on the lathe and then to, to the dowel plate and that worked out really nicely. Yeah. <laughs> My notes are in the bed. <laughs> Let's see, yeah, talk about that, talk about that. Uh, and the finish, the finish I went for on this one, I did only three coats of armor seal. Usually I do like four or five, but I wanted to keep it, um, more of like a closer to the wood look, a little more natural looking. This has four and it does have a little bit more of a plasticky feel to it. I mean, it's not too bad, but this feels a lot more like wood. So I don't know, I kind of like that really more natural looking finish. It's, I don't know, it's a nice change. But yeah, the other thing I made for this, for the bassinet are the little uh, rocking shoes, whatever you want to call them. They just fit underneath the rockers like that, and then they prevent it from rocking. I have two of them, one for either on one end or on the opposite corners, and I'll keep it from rocking back and forth. But that works out really well. This was just the off cut from when I cut the rocker uh, curve in it. And then one little bit of follow-up from, from last week. I've been getting a lot of questions and comments about this. On the changing table for the changing pad, it's not attached at all right now. I am going to build a little frame that goes around it and then hooks on the back of the changing table. That way the, the uh, pad won't be able to move around and baby won't be able to roll off and take the pad with it. So that'd be a nice little, that I figured that would be 
less of a priority right away because they don't tend to roll around as much right away. I needed this thing to be done as soon as possible before I needed that done. So that's how that worked out. But this past week, I also started working on the crib and that's going on along pretty well so far. I'm not that far into it to be honest, but it's not a very large project in, in reality, especially after doing this because all the crib really is is four posts with eight rails that connect it together and then a bunch of spindles. So I have all the stock ready for the posts and the rails. I did that this week. And then for the spindles, I'll be making those out of maple and they'll be turned on the lathe with their router because they're gonna be, well, you can do it by hand too, but I'm gonna turn them with the routers to make them all consistent. They're gonna taper from about a, either an inch, sorry, a half inch on the ends or five eighths on the ends to maybe three quarters or seven eighths in the middle. So it'll be that kind of nice little taper towards the ends kind of style thing. And so the crib is gonna be maple for the spindles and walnut for the frame. I think it's gonna look really nice. I don't think I've shown a picture of the inspiration for that one yet. So here's a quick picture of that. This is the picture that Lindsay found that um, she wanted me to make the crib based on. So that's what the crib is gonna look like. And I'm really looking forward to getting that one done too and being just totally done with all this baby stuff. <laughs> oh man, it's getting close though. So I don't know if a lot of people have asked about that, about the baby. The baby is due next week on the 12th. So pretty much any time now would be an acceptable arrival date. <laughs> so I have one last project to update you on this week and it is the flooring project. Let me take you into that room and show you the progress I've made so far. It hasn't, I haven't made that much progress yet. <laughs> So for whatever reason, my microphone didn't want to record this bit when I was actually explaining what's going on here. Well, but basically I'm just showing how far I've gotten. I've just put down a few rows of flooring. And I'm also pointing out that I went through and I lay out a few rows of flooring first. And then I sort of leisurely install the pieces of flooring as I go kind of here and there. Just because it's kind of a hassle to just sit there and be on your knees um, laying flooring all the time. I have my chop saw set up in here. It makes it really easy. I can cut my floorboards to whatever length I need, trim the ends or whatever, and I got my whole stack of flooring back there in the corner that I can pick from, and hopefully that pile will be a lot smaller by the time I get over there, and I'll have less to move. I'm also using my shoulder plane to finesse the tongues on a lot of these floorboards. Just because I was using my table saw, a lot of the boards just weren't super consistent, so the shoulder plane makes it really easy to adjust those things on the fly here. So I'm actually shooting this update right now while the first part of the changing table build is being rendered on my computer. Um, that's actually why this room is all rearranged because I decided to shoot my intro and outro from this corner because there's more room for the camera to get back. It's in the hallway right now. So that video will be out, will be out before you watch this. <laughs> so you'll have that as well. And then a new episode of the Matt and Matthew show was out. It will be out, sorry, tomorrow, wow. I'm editing that after I edit this one tonight and that was about social media and specifically Instagram and how Instagram is a really great tool for creators uh, looking to get inspired and share their work. I was also on a podcast called The Busy Creator. That was a really fun discussion. We talked about um, you know getting things done. The podcast itself is about people who are self-motivated and creative types who need to get things done and, and need to be their own kind of managers. So we talked a lot about um, my techniques or my my routines and my um, tips and tricks or whatever for getting things done in my own life and my own job here, which is making these videos and making the furniture. And we talked about some interesting tangents as well. So if you want to listen to that as well, I'll leave a link to that in the description. That was a fun little discussion. So I think that is all the content I'll tell you about this week, I think. <laughs> So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I tackled today or anything here in the nursery or down in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I appreciate those. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, happy woodworking.